Greetings all. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Howard Kotz, part of the school academic leadership, and I wanted to talk to you today about intellectual freedom, which translates onto our college campus um, as academic freedom, uh, both of which are protected by our First Amendment rights of freedom of speech. The reason that I wanted to make this video for you is that generally in our profession, the staff training does not normally include intellectual freedom, what it is and why it should be preserved and protected. As a faculty member here, your rights of intellectual freedom should be, and under my school leadership, will continue to be protected. <clears throat> it's the right of every individual to both seek and receive information from all points of view without any sort of restriction. I mean, that's pretty much what college is about for our students. We as the school faculty and staff, you know, we're, we're in charge of a lot of different things when it comes to these students that walk on campus. We're in charge of not only teaching them about their vocation, their future jobs, but about culture what it's like, um, what it used to be like, about truth, and about character, teaching them how to be the people that they are supposed to be. It's a time to teach the old truths, the ones that you and I know um, up to this point, and allowing them to explore and discover new truths. Your capacity to escape the perceived ideas that the social norm presses upon us is what intellectual freedom is all about. You, know, you have my encouragement to push the boundaries of your field. That's what, like I said, that's what college is about for our students. And I, as a school leader, could not justify or act in a way that I would not allow you all to do the exact same things. You know, there are certain freedoms that come along in college. The freedom to ask questions, to challenge assumptions, criticize, speculate, re-examine old evidence and search for new evidence like I talked before, express your findings, hear others, and learned to work together as a team to express their, to, when it comes to their findings. You may not always agree, but you can engage in that dialogue with them, with other informed peers. It's a time for you and the students to read and consider views of people who lived before us, teach what one has learned. And like I said, the, the natural intellectual freedom that we as people have um, turns into, on our college campus, the freedom um, of academic expression. You know, these are your rights as a faculty that are protected by the First Amendment. You know, there's, a, there's an alarming trend that uh, is happening right now in which some school leaders, only a, min a minority, I believe, are, are exercising their powers in the wrong way. They are not allowing their faculty and their staff to have an opinion of their own, which is not how shared govern governance is done. Shared governance and the, the right to academic freedom is a group effort from the top to the bottom. These school leaders can be vindictive. They have a corporate mind frame. And, and you know, some of you are probably sitting there saying, well, you know, that's kind of how college seems to be run these days, colleges and universities. And unfortunately, you know, we can't, I can't really disagree with you because at the end of the day, we need to figure out how to keep funding coming in so that you and future staff members, faculty members can keep your jobs. 
But what I don't want to be and what I am working very diligently not to do is be one of those people that holds grudges. That allows my ego to get into the way of your rights and your freedoms. I want to keep an open door and I want you all to feel comfortable that if there's something that we as a school leadership group do that you are not comfortable with, I want you to have the autonomy to email me, call me, you know, and just say, hey, in a very professional way, of course, you know, this is kind of the feeling of myself and my department about the decisions that were just made. I mean, like I said, from the top to the bottom, that's what we need to do to be able to provide the best education possible for our students, both in and out of the classrooms. As far as it goes for you all, and not just when you're re when you're leading classroom instruction, you know I refer to a quote by the Global Colloquium of University Presidents, and there are lots of organizations out there, the AAUP and some other professional organizations for you um, that that could be very valuable resources. This is one that I found. It says, "Freedom to conduct research, teach, speak, and publish." subject to norms and standards of scholarly inquiry without interference or penalty, wherever the search for truth and understanding may lead. That, for me, that quote speaks volumes. You, know, you all are the experts in your fields. You know, I trust, and you got to these points in your careers, because you have shown people, groups of people, that your thoughts, your ideas, your judgment are sound and innovative. Any kind of dissension that we would have amongst ourselves, <clears throat> unfortunately these days, uh, can't be kept under wraps the way that it used to be. We have social media. Any dis dissension that students may hear about, any dissension that other faculty members may hear about. You know, those things go public, and they go public quick. They go viral faster than some of us would would uh, think they should be. So that is another reason why you know, the chain of command and the importance of communication from myself and our other school leaders to the department heads down to you all, uh, full-time, tenured, part-time, it doesn't matter. You know, one person unhappy in here can really put and tarnish our university name. And I know myself, other school leaders, and you all have worked hard to give this school a good name. And that's what we need to continue to do. I want you to, like I said, have the autonomy to research, to push boundaries, to find new ideas. And I want you to be comfortable in the fact that if a decision is made, you are able to contact me in some form and we can talk it out. You may not always like the answers. I may not always like the answers. And you know we need to, to work together to make sure that Number one, for my end, that you all are being protected. Um, number two, that we're protecting and providing our students, like I said, with not only the right, the appropriate vocational skills, but just teaching them how to be good, productive citizens. Because at the end of the day, that's what academia is about. Academia, from as long back as I can, I've been able to research, because I haven't been around forever, is built on the freedom to exchange ideas, to disagree with people, and to challenge new ideas. You have my support when it comes to doing those things. I look forward to continuing to work with you all in a professional manner. And please, like I said, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good day.